Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I have another IKEA hacks video for you. I get requested to IKEA hacks all the time, and honestly, walking around IKEA and looking for projects to create is one of my favorite things to do. I always find so much inspiration there, um, and I get very creative when I go. So all around, it's a win-win for both of us because I have four really, really exciting projects for you guys today. Now, the crazy thing is that I personally was able to film all four of these projects in just one day. I have never been able to film all my projects in one day, Traditionally, it takes me about two days to finish all my projects, which means that these projects are super achievable, but at the same time, they're also very impactful. Like, they're a great change from the original, and I think that you guys are going to love them so much. Now, if you are not a part of the Lone Fox family, you're missing out. Make sure to click that red subscribe button. Also, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way, you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. And also, guys, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I post so much more DIY content over there. It is Lone Fox Home. And I've also recently been so into TikTok, you guys. I posted, like eight TikToks over the past week that is completely different content than what's here on my YouTube channel. So you guys can follow me over on TikTok as well. It is Lone Fox Home. But let's go ahead and dive on into these IKEA hacks. Our first project here is such a cute pillowcase, you guys, and I got inspo from this one right here, which I'll link below for you guys. I found this on Wayfair's website, but it was like $160 for the pillow, and I was like, we could totally recreate this with an Ikea pillowcase, so I'm using the Vigdis pillowcase by Ikea, and I'm also getting some tone-on-tone -tone yarn. Now, you could totally adjust this. You could have this be colored, or you could have it be, you know, tone-on-tone -tone like I'm doing, but I'm going ahead and I'm grabbing three strips of yarn here. These are probably about two and a half yards each, and I'm going to be braiding these into a long section because we're going to need multiple braided sections of yarn, which we're then going to be able to use to create the design on the front of the pillow. So the design is totally optional as well. I'm going to be following a similar motif as the original pillow that I shared with you guys from Wayfair. But as you can see here, I'm just going through and doing a simple braid. I honestly don't even know how to describe how to do a braid. All you have to do is bring your right strand over the middle, your left strand over the middle, and repeat all the way down until you have your braided section. So just continue braiding until you have the desired lengths, which I put on the screen for you guys right here. And these are my finished off sections here. I'm going to be using some Fabri-Tac Permanent Adhesive, which is just my favorite fabric adhesive, and just pulling up that inspo photo once again. Now, I do believe that this is not just a pillowcase that one company designed. I have seen pillowcases with a similar motif all over the place. I um, mean, I think it's really cute. You kind of have these rainbows on the left side. So what I start off by doing is actually mapping out my design with my braided strands. So I'm going around and just kind of freehand laying them down. I feel like this gives it a little bit more of that organic handmade look, which I love. But just keep in mind that you're going to be using two strands to create this squiggly section. So you're going to want to just map this out first and lay it out so that you're able to easily adjust it prior to gluing it down. So that's exactly what I did here. Just kind of placed it. And once I had it in my desired spot, I went back in with a generous amount of my Fabri-Tac fabric glue. And I can tell you guys right now, this is about two weeks after filming this video that I am doing this voiceover. And my my pillow is in perfect condition. I have been putting it on my bed for the past two weeks and it is so cute. I'm just obsessed with it. The Fabri-Tac adhesive really holds it down as well, but if you want to, you could totally go in there and sew it. So as we're finishing up gluing down our sections, just make sure that you have a little bit of tail left on each side because we're going to be unbraiding the section up to the edge of the pillow, tying it into a knot around itself, and then that's going to be the tassel on the edge of the pillow. I just think this adds such a cute little detail, and it will only be on the left and right sides where you added these little braided sections. And once you're done, you have your brand new throw pillow. For a second project, I came across this Ivar shelf unit side piece while I was rummaging around the warehouse section of Ikea. I had no intention on purchasing this, but when I saw that they were sold separately, I ended up buying one. I brought it home and I started drilling through every other hole in this shelving unit. So basically the interior section here already has these pre-drilled holes, which basically determine the different heights that you could put your shelf at once you had two of these on either side of the unit. But I just went ahead and drilled fully through the holes. And then on the back side, I flipped it over and re-drilled through just to make sure that we had a section which we could then go back through and thread some string through just to make a little bit more detail on the edge of this blanket ladder which you guys are going to see. Now 
Now on the very bottom, there is a piece that goes across as a support, but I went ahead and cut this off because I wanted it to have more of the appearance of a ladder as opposed to having that section on the very bottom there. And then I did bring it outside and use my electric sander just to go ahead and sand down those edges since we did have some splintered wood, which will also prepare us for our next step in the process, which is going to be staining. Now you could totally choose any color stain you want. You can go for a natural wood tone if you want to bring in some more warmth in your space, or you can go for a black like I did just because I wanted a nice contrast. And I also was originally going to be using some kind of orangey leather faux cording, but I ended up not being able to use it because I didn't have enough of it, which sucked. So I had to go through with some macrame cording in the end to fill in the blanks. Now, if I knew I was going to use a macrame cording, I probably would have opted for something a little bit more warm toned, but do not worry. I still love the way that this piece ended up turning out. So I used the classic black stain just on a foam brush and I applied this on the entire exterior of the blanket ladder, the front and back sides and all of the undersides as well. You're also going to want to try to get it into some of those holes and just let this dry overnight prior to going in with your macrame cording. So this is just a macrame cord here. I ended up cutting it to be three times the length of our blanket ladder. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of painter's tape just on the ends of our macrame cord. And this is going to almost act as a needle, which we can then go ahead and use to thread through our holes. It's just much easier than using the macrame cord itself. I just find that the painter's tape kind of allows you to grip it a bit easier and pull it through. And the actual design that you create with your cording is totally up to you as well. Now, if you could picture this with some really cute kind of like orangey leather cording, that was my original vibe, but I love the way the macrame cording ended up looking as well. And all around this project only cost me $20 to create. And it's a very substantial, large piece. Just tie a knot at the end and hang your blankets. You're good to go. most requested Ikea hacks is to create more versions of the Lull House rug, which I have done a couple times on my channel here. I've showed you guys how to create your very own designs and patterns on top of them. So this is basically a braided jute rug. And what I started off by doing was actually cutting a 12 inch strip of painter's tape and applying it to the exact center of our rug. We're going to be working from the middle out. So once you have your middle piece stuck down, I'm actually counting two knots out from the edge of the tape and I'm applying a new piece of tape. So every single revealed section that is not covered with tape will be the width of two knots, which you can kind of see in the video here. As you can see, everything is just two knots wide and then I'm adding my painter's tape. And this is just a very, very repetitive pattern from here on out. So you're gonna start off with something like this and you're just going to continue you adding sections like this, making sure that you're spacing them out every two knots because the two knot sections that are not covered in tape are actually going to be spray painted and that's going to be what reveals our design into the end. So I work from the middle out, ensuring that I'm spacing them out pretty evenly. Now, some of the knots, because this rug is kind of organic, will require you to space them out kind of just freehand, if that makes sense. Not every single double knot is going to be the same width. So just kind of keep in mind as you're placing down your tape to follow a similar width as the one prior just to create a very cohesive design in the end. There will be a point where you're not going to be able to add any more horizontal tape sections. So just go ahead and add a couple of stripes to finish off those corners. And I brought this outside and used just a normal Rust-Oleum black spray paint. This is totally durable. I had my last rug that I spray painted like this in my closet for about two years, um, just until it started to get a little bit dingy as rugs normally do. And it never ever chipped or the paint never got off of it or transferred to anything at all. I think it's totally safe. And you can also go in with some form of clear coat after if you want to. I just didn't find the need to for this piece. So once you spray it and allow it to dry, this is the fun part where you get to take off the tape and reveal your pattern. And I really love how much of that natural jute really shows through on this rug. You get a lot of warmth from it, but you also get that really stark geometric design from the black lines that we ended up spray painting on there. And once you are done, you have this really fun geometric rug. You 
guys know I had to save my favorite for last and we're going to be starting off with two of these wooden mixing bowls along with the Hema light cord from Ikea. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the 1 and 5 8 inch drill bit from this drill bit set that I have and we're going to be drilling through the top of these wooden bowls which is actually very very simple to do. I'm going to be drilling right through the middle of the large bowl and also right through the middle of the small bowl as well. Now once you have those holes done you're going to go ahead and grab some jute cording or whatever cording that you have and I have these little wooden beads here which I've had in my stash for a while. I'll link the exact ones below for you guys and I'm going to go ahead and just string on probably about 20 to 25 of these beads because we are actually going to be using this as a little accent to detail. So once you have those on your strands we're going to hot glue together our bowls in this fashion here making sure that the holes line up so that our light cord can go through the center and then our little beaded section is actually going to go right around the middle there so you don't have to worry about any excess hot glue because this will totally cover it up. All you need to do is tie your cording together, cut the knot, and the knot will be hidden in the center of those large hole beads there. So this just, I think, adds such a boho, cute little detail. And I also wanted to add a little bit of detail to our light cord, which I've never done before. I always just leave the light cords as is. But for this particular piece, I wanted it to kind of have that very natural kind of fiber accent um, that kind of just ties back to the warmth of the bowl. So I went ahead and I wrapped my cording with that jute there and just every about 20 or 30 wraps I suggest is adding a little bit of hot glue. Now in the end I wasn't able to stick this through and screw it together on the opposite side so I added a generous amount of hot glue and I also added more to the top of the pendant um, than you guys can see here and then I went ahead and just to make it look a little bit finished on the inside I did glue on that opposite piece which typically screws in. Add your light bulb and that finishes off this piece. And you have made it through another episode of Ikea Hacks. Thank you guys so much for the constant support on this little series here on the channel. I absolutely love going to Ikea and creating products for you guys, or not products, well, taking their products and creating projects, if you know what I'm talking about. If you are not already part of the Lone Fox family, make sure to click that red subscribe button. It is 100% free, and I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here for you guys. And I would love to catch you guys here on the channel next week. So I will go ahead and let you guys go. I hope this video was inspiring for you. And let me know if you recreate any of these DIY projects by hashtagging Lone Fox Home on Instagram. I love being able to see your guys' creations. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye, guys! <laughs>